Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be, I'm going to be trying out a new type of video which is weather forecasting kind of lectures and today I'm going to be doing weather forecasting basics. Now I'm going to be trying quite a lot of these um, lectures, kind of lecture series over the next few weeks and months and hopefully they'll become a, a thing that I do quite often and I keep doing for quite a long time. And this one is going to be about weather forecasting basics, how to put a forecast together, that kind of thing. Um, and if you're finding, if you don't want something that's basic, you want something that's a bit more advanced, then I do have some more advanced lectures um, coming up which I'm planning for, um, especially focused on civilian weather forecasting and uh, severe thunderstorm forecasting. But let's get into it. So this is episode one of a five episode uh, lecture series and today we're going to be talking about the basics of weather to lay a kind of a foundation of knowledge. So high and low pressure, um, the jet stream, France, that kind of thing. We will be covering much more on this topic from how to read weather charts all the way to how to put a forecast together. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about today is the jet stream. Now the jet stream drives weather across the world, um, whether, you're in, whether you're in the UK, the US or Australia, and it's located very high up in the atmosphere, about five to nine miles above the ground, depending when you, where you are on the globe, and it consists of very fast winds which favour low pressure development. It's driven by a temperature contrast, which is why you tend to see a stronger jet stream further north um, than, a jet, than the jet stream further south, which is called the subtropical jet stream, um, uh, because the contrast um, at higher latitudes is stronger. Now, I just said that the jet stream favours low pressure development, and it, it really happened in two particular regions of the jet stream, which I've circled here. Now this is slightly advanced stuff, but I'll quickly go on to it, but these two red um, red circles that I've put on this map are called the right entrance and the left exit of a jet stream. These favour low pressure de development because they have upper level divergence, which is when the air spreads apart, and because the air spreads apart, more air rises to fill the gap, and that is what um, causes low pressure, which to form, which I'll, I'm about to talk about. But the cool thing is, um, where, where these red circles are, if I go to the surface pressure chart, you can see that's where areas of low pressure roughly are. So you can already see that these small things can help you put a forecast together. So just to quickly summarise that, the jet stream drives the weather, consists of very fast winds, which help um, cause low pressure systems. Now I'll talk about high pressure and low pressure systems. So high pressure is formed by sinking air, <coughs> sorry, by sinking air, sinking from high above, and generally leads to clear skies as the air suppresses cloud development as it sinks. Now the air warms as it sinks, um, and and also high pressure uh, leads to blocking, which is when one weather pattern gets stuck in the same kind of the same way for a very long time, possibly even up to months in the most extreme cases. But generally, um, around two weeks is a normal is a normal length of time for a blocking pattern. This is a diagram of how high pressure forms, which I drew um, a few days ago, and you can see that the air, it's sinking from above, it's warming, and then the air at the surface is diverging or spreading out, as you can see here, and that's high pressure. Low pressure, however, is the opposite. It's formed by rising air, which I briefly mentioned earlier, and it generally leads to rain and stormy weather because the air um, rises and then it cools and it condenses because um, air is, uh, is cooler higher up, and that turns into rain and storm clouds. And at times, because of what's something called the pressure gradient, it can lead to very strong winds um, with the gradient between high and low pressure. For low pressure to form, you want, like I said uh, earlier, diverging air at upper levels and converging air at the surface, which you can see at this diagram. Now, an upper air diagram is pretty essential um, to figure out where um, pressure systems will form, and I briefly touched on it earlier with the jet stream diagram. But you can see here, this is uh, at a pressure surface called 500 millibars, and you can really see here the winds uh, and the temperatures, and um, like I said, upper divergence is favourable for low pressure systems and upper convergence is favourable for high pressure systems. And this is quite advanced, so don't be worried if you are getting confused by us. I will touch on this later on. But in the red circle, 
the, the winds are converging um, but and you can see by these arrows they're being pushed together along these um, the black lines um, and then on the other side we, in the blue diagram we have the winds um, diverging which they're being pushed apart which you can see by those black lines and then notice that if I do that surface pressure chart areas near the blue circle have low pressure and areas near the high the red circle have high pressure so these things are all interlinked and that's what i love about weather and you can really see that these links um really help you make a forecast they're important to remember so the next thing that i'll be talking about are fronts now fronts generally form uh, with a low pressure system and they show the boundary between um warm or warmer and cold or cold uh, air now, each front is different because of the way of that the warm air and cold air are positioned, but generally they bring to they bring rain um g generally heavy rain um sometimes snow as well, also clouds and warm fronts in general bring kind of showery and persistent rain, cold fronts being kind of a uh, short but intense spells of rain, and occluded fronts kind of cloudy um, and rainy, a bit more like a warm front, but it's still going to have embedded convection like a cold front. This is a general diagram of a low pressure system with fronts, and you can see the warm front usually comes first with the cold front behind it, but as the cold front is faster than the warm front, um, they merge, and that's where the occluded front forms. I'll talk about this a bit more in the low pressure forecasting section of this course. So air masses. Generally, um, to link air masses to the jet stream, um, if you're north of the jet stream, the air masses tend to be cold, and if you're south of the jet stream, air masses tend to be mild. And an air mass carries different characteristics depending on where its source region is. For example, if an air mass comes from uh, a snowy region of Canada or Siberia, then it's going to be a cold and quite dry air mass. However, if, an, if the source region is from possibly the Atlantic where it's very moist, then the characteristics of the air mass are likely to be kind of moist. And you can see here there are different types of air mass. There's generally tropical, polar and arctic air masses from different source regions, so either maritime or continental. And this diagram from the Met Office uh, shows kind of the different types of air mass you find and I recommend uh, to you I recommend that you remember this possibly screenshot it something like that and learn the different types but generally from the north and east it's cold and then from the south it's warm and it's moist or dry depending if it's been over an ocean or land and that's it for today I hope you enjoyed it I hope I wasn't too confusing and if you have any questions put them in the comments section and I'll answer them for you Thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice day.